Hello, everyone. I think you can all hear me. I think you can all see me. Uh, welcome to session two of uh, this year's cardiac safety meeting. Uh, my name is Elena, and I will uh, represent Nanium this afternoon um, or morning, depending on uh, where you are at the moment. I am very happy and excited to welcome four excellent speakers uh, this afternoon. And as one um, or the, our first speaker's title starts with single step to a staircase, we are building this staircase today in our talks and uh, we will have uh, various topics. Um, we'll start from investigations of cardiac ion channels and then we'll continue up to updates on the chronic um, drug-induced cardiotoxicity assessments uh, from the HES system uh, cell working group. Um, very interesting talks to come. And I think um, Monique uh, Wendley from um, Down Under is here with us. Thank you very much, Monique, for joining this late. Um, Monique is a senior postdoctoral scientist at uh, Victor Chang Cardiac Research Institute. And she will be the first one to go up that staircase today um, and introduce us to uh, high throughput protocols for measuring her uh, drug block. Monique, are you there? Uh, yes, I am. Oh, perfect, thank you. <laughs> uh, can everyone see my slides? Yes. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your kind introduction, Eleanor. Um, and I'll jump right in. Okay, so as, as many of you will already be familiar with, um, the role of Herg drug block in the generation of uh, cardiac arrhythmias um, is crucial, uh, such that Herg drug block reduces the IKR current uh, in the cardiac uh, tissue, uh, and this results in delay, delayed repolarization of the cardiac ventricular action potential, uh, which can result in the generation of early after depolarization, uh, which puts a patient at, at risk for further development of uh, fatal cardiac arrhythmia to subdepon. And this is evident in the electrocardiogram waveform as a prolongation of the QT interval. And as a result of this, this strong link, uh, in 2005, the uh, guidelines for uh, preclinical testing uh, were changed such that drugs were required to be evaluated for her drug block as a surrogate for prorhythmic risk. Uh, but it's since been discovered that not all her drug block results in arrhythmia or even uh, action potential prolongation. So as a result of this, the comprehensive in vitro prorhythmic assay was developed, uh, which is a major collaboration um, internationally, which was designed to develop a new mechanism-based test for prorhythmic risk. Uh, this was set in a number of different stages, uh, such that um, initially to test the effects on a range of different cardiac currents uh, using the gold standard patch clamp technique, uh, looking at potency, and in the case of HERG, also kinetics. Uh, and these values are then used to inform in silico uh, cellular simulations of the uh, ventricular action potential, which can then give us a prorhythmic risk score. And the SIPA dynamic protocol was uh, developed to measure the kinetics of block and potency simultaneously in HERG channel currents. Uh, and this is the, the simple uh, step protocol that was developed by the Iron Channel Working Group, group which is based on the Milnes protocol. Uh, and this was applied um, a number of times under control and uh, drug conditions. And the initial response uh, under drug conditions is the onset of drug block. Um, shown in panel C here are the um, typical responses uh, for uh, control conditions in dark blue and pink, the onset of drug block, um, which can be used to derive um, measurements of the kinetics and also the final drug block in light blue. And so, as I mentioned, uh, the percentage block over time can be calculated from the drug onset response, which is corrected for the control current. 
Uh, so we have a nice um, trace here representing percentage block over time. And this is fit with a single exponential curve from which we can derive a time constant value or a tau on. Um, and uh, the initial gold standard data set um, where we assess the 12 uh, SIPA uh, test panel um, of no drugs with known um, various risks from high, uh, low and intermediate um, were, was published in, in this study. And so the next, the next step was to de determine the feasibility of this SIPA dynamic protocol uh, in um, a high throughput system, which is relevant for um, industry screening um, methodology. Uh, so we used the Syncopatch 384PE, where we were able to look at 384 recordings in parallel. Uh, we chose four different drugs um, from the original test panels um, um, from the manual uh, patch clamp study. Um, and these were selected um, for our ability to accurately measure the kinetics of drug block. And these were each tested at three different concentrations. And so to automate the quality control, we developed uh, in-house uh, quality control pipeline. Um, and we analyzed a number of parameters, including the, the quality of the patch um, or cell, including seal, series resistance and capacitance. We then looked at um, various parameters of the HERG channel current itself, um, the amplitude of the current and the stability uh, over time. And then we looked at percentage block and uh, uh, curve fitting the actual analysis of the data um, to determine um, that the analysis was of high quality. And another important aspect of uh, achieving high quality data sets is the isolating of pure HERG. Um, so we needed to automate uh, the leak correction. Now, in comparison to manual patch clamp techniques, um, the automated patch clamp system is a little different in its setup. So we have a planar patch configuration here where the cell is adhered to the bottom um, of the, the plate. And this small hole here is where we, we gain access to the internal contents of the cell uh, when we go whole cell. And um, the leak between um, the, the edge of this, this hole and the cell membrane is uh, the leak current. And uh, in uh, planar patch clamp technique, the only once there was the addition of this uh, fluoride on the internal solution, which was able to complex with the calcium, was the, the seal quality consistently um, uh, being able to maintain uh, to improve uh, throughput and quality of these data sets. Uh, so initially we used um, a minus a 90 millivolt leak step, which is uh, found just prior to the, uh, the test pulse um, where we see the current. Uh, and this measures only the leak. However, we found that the protocol um, previously set up was not sufficient for our leak correction. Uh, so we were able to incorporate the initial portion um, of the, uh, the zero millivolt step um, incorporate data from there where there's no um, HERG current uh, yet present um, to improve the leak correction. So here in black, we have uncorrected data and purple, we have the incorporation of the minus 90 and the zero millivolt where we have good correction of the data. Whereas without that um, zero millivolt data, we see uh, under correction here. Uh, and this is particularly important when we uh, do the subtraction um, to get the percentage block over time, where we have a, a significant degree of noise uh, at the beginning here if it's not adequately leak corrected. And it, there's also changes in the kinetics and um, the full amount um, of block measured. Uh, so our next step was to then go on um, to look at the number of sweep repetitions. So in our initial manual patch study, we looked at five sweeps, but uh, another study where um, they looked at 10 sweeps um, for the physiological temperature data set. Uh, so we wanted to compare both. So here we have the percentage data retained um, 
while after we've applied um, the sequence of uh, quality controls. Uh, and for the five sweep data sets, we have 21% uh, data remaining um, after we've applied these quality controls. However, when we did uh, a, a 10 sweep data sets, this was significantly reduced to 9.4%. Um, and this is largely to do with also the, the length of the protocols that we used. So with the uh, drug block concentrations where we had um, a faster, faster onset of block, we were able to use short 10 second um, protocols. However, where the onset of block was much slower, we were required to use longer 40 second protocols. Uh, and this drastically changed um, the, or increased the length of the experiments, particularly for those um, 10 sweep experiments. And this is definitely reflected in the data retained. Um, if I draw your attention to the pink dashed line here, where we have almost no data retained in comparison to the other data sets. Um, so the longer experiments definitely lead to a greater instability and loss of data. But what we found when um, we compared uh, the, the results um, of potency and kinetics of block between five sweeps and 10 sweeps, there was no significant differences at any drug concentration. Uh, so here um, we are comparing the five sweep data sets uh, between the initial um, gold standard a manual patch data set and the high throughput sinker patch data set. And the, the black dotted line down the center is um, representative of no change. And what we see for the potency data that um, most of the data lies within less than twofold change. Um, however, the kinetic data was slightly more variable with um, some of the data sets uh, lying between the two and threefold um, range there. Um, so in most cases, um, the data sets are comparable, although there are significant differences for some. And we explore, explored um, and show these here uh, for percentage block and the, the time constant of block. Um, and we believe that these are from a number of different sources. Um, firstly, related to the high throughput platform itself, and not just the sinker patch, it would be relevant to any other high throughput platform um, that they tend to run at uh, three to four degrees higher temperature um, than we can achieve with a manual throughput system. Um, and there is a certain amount of uh, plastic exposure that's required within um, this high throughput system, although it has been significantly minimized. Um, and for drugs like cisapride and tephenidine, um, this is a significant known issue. Uh, and also the patch clamp set solutions are different between manual and high throughput, uh, which I will get into a little bit later. And um, also we have uh, potential causes related to the protocol length itself. Uh, so as we showed in our initial manual patch study, the length of the protocol um, is quite important. Here we have an example of 30 nanomolar cisapride with a short 10 second protocol. And when we do the, the subtraction of the data um, to look at the percentage block over time, we essentially have a straight line. We fit a, um, an exponential curve to this and the results that we get from cell to cell are extremely variable um, shown in panel B. However, as we increase the length of this sweep and we start to um, record the plateau of this block, then we have um, a very tight data set um, where we can accurately determine um, the kinetics of block. Um, and this is also carried across to the high throughput system and perhaps even more so. Uh, here uh, is a figure where we look at the sweep length um, divided by the time constant value and the coefficient of variation on the, um, the x-axis. And you can see that where um, the, the sweep length is less than three times the time constant, that these values are um, quite variable. Um, so longer sweep durations are necessary in these instances. However, what we did find when we compared um, those results with uh, appropriate sweep lengths for drugs with faster kinetics that we could achieve a quality control pass rate of almost 50%. 
So we also wanted to look at whether there were potentially other protocols um, that we could look at the kinetics of drug blocks. So while, while spending a lot of time on this SIPA dynamic protocol, perhaps there's, there's other ways to assess. Uh, so we wanted to look at if there was some way that we could use uh, in silico HERG binding models that are informed and directly fit to the patch clamp data sets. Um, and then use this to um, inform in silico cellular simulations and develop the pro-rhythmic risk score. Um, so using these information breach protocols, um, we can improve the measurement of, or show improved measurement uh, of drug block kinetics and potency um, by also including uh, drug state dependency um, information and the effects of drugs on her gating kinetics. And the sine wave protocol is one such example of a information rich protocol, which was designed to understand her gating kinetics. Uh, and it allows for rapid collection of high quality data sets um, over just an eight second period. And you can see below the, the current trace from that protocol. Uh, and using a simple four state channel state model um, in a simple circular configuration, uh, this uh, model was directly fit to the data set. And this, uh, you can essentially see the state occupancy of each of the various states over the time course of the, the protocol as it's applied here. And ultimately, this protocol produces a more predictive model than other approaches. Uh, and this was, um, and here we see uh, a single step kind of representative um, that would be similar to a profile that we would see on just the uh, using the SIPA dynamic protocol for comparison. And so this, this sine wave protocol was then developed um, for a high throughput alternative, the staircase protocol, where it's a, a 15 second staircase protocol where a number of uh, 500 millisecond steps um, over a range of, of voltage voltages were used to observe uh, char characteristic Herg decay. And uh, we envision potential applications for drug binding and kinetics for this protocol, where we can directly fit the data sets um, in, and um, improve our models of drug block. Uh, so similarly to the Herg dynamic protocol, um, we applied uh, a number of different sweeps under control and drug response uh, conditions. And we were also able to implement various, uh, some variations to the protocols where we can change the staircase duration and the interpulse interval, and even um, slightly change the protocols themselves. This, is, this example is called the staircase within a staircase. Um, and it uh, looks at a different channel state occupancy profile, which may be important um, when assessing drug block. Uh, so as I said previously, uh, to get good fit of the data, we need to have isolation of a pure herd current. So here we incorporated um, the subtraction of endogenous currents by looking at full drug block at the end of experiments and subtracting the leak current. Um, where we um, apply as previously a single leak step um, or a ramp to then estimate um, the leak uh, for the rest of the, the protocol where we have Herg current present. And an important assumption in this, uh, this subtraction is that the leak current is linear um, with respect to voltage. Uh, unfortunately, what we've uh, what's been discovered is that um, the inclusion of uh, this fluoride and calcium complexing um, causes a nonlinear leak current, and it's been shown that uh, cells um, on the the sinker patch, uh, as you increase the the voltage. Um, that uh, it diverts from this linear relationship. So we then don't have an adequate measure of the leak current um, where we actually have um, a Herg um, currents present. Uh, so we went forward to compare um, fluoride-free experiments on the, syn the sinker patch to uh, standard fluoride-free containing, of uh, fluoride-containing experiments. 
And uh, what we found was, as expected, the, the seal resistance was lower. Um, and we also had a, a bit of difficulty obtaining um, good access to the cells. So, so they weren't converting to the whole cell configuration. Um, and upon further consultation, we uh, included the, uh, the cell membrane perforator Essen uh, at 10 micromolar wasn't completely sufficient to, to aid in breaking through the membrane. So we still had a significant number of cells with no current. Um, however, with increased concentrations, we were able to, um, at least those cells that were able to seal um, that had current and were st stable. Um, so we proceeded with using the 15 micromolar concentration um, for further experiments. Now, uh, at this stage, we don't have uh, modeled um, uh, data fit directly to um, by the uh, any models. So this is just a manual measurements of the percentage block um, at a single point towards the end of the protocol. Um, so for these three drugs, we found relatively little difference between using fluoride or um, fluoride free containing solutions. However, for cisapride, quinidine and verapamil, um, we saw significant differences um, to both the kinetics of block uh, and the de degree of block. Um, and these, these responses um, appear to be quite drug specific. Um, but we're still getting to the bottom of, of why this might be the case. Uh, we also looked at various um, modifications of the protocol, uh, increasing protocol length um, for cisapride, uh, defetilide and tevenidine. This seems to be quite important as these are um, slower blockers. Um, we then uh, looked at interpulse interval um, while the channels are closed. Um, between sweeps. Um, and when we decreased uh, this the closure period, we didn't really see um, a whole lot of effect on the, um, the kinetics and percentage block, um, but that does have the potential to explore various um, closed inactive state block and um, dissociation of drugs um, from the channel while well, that's closed. Um, and the protocol state um, preference um, was explored with the staircase in a staircase protocol. And again, for these particular drugs, we didn't see uh, a whole lot of difference. Uh, we also looked at temperature. So previously, all of these experiments have been done at ambient temperature. When we increased this to uh, uh, 37 degrees, similarly as to what we've shown with um, the SIPA dynamic protocol, um, the, uh, there's faster degree um, uh, onset of block and um, some changes in the degree of block. Uh, and this is very much uh, drug dependent. So just showing an overlay of all the, the different um, protocols and conditions that we've tried. Um, there's no consistency between the different drugs. So the, they're all quite um, drug specific, and this will be important when we're, we're designing our um, models of drug block. So based on the, the simple uh, four state herd kinetic model, um, which has been already used to inform um, the, it, which has been informed by this staircase um, in this, uh, the pre previous study. And we envision um, adding a drug binding kinetic um, transition to this, which may be quite simple to the open state or to various inactive state, uh, also allowing us to incorporate um, drug uh, trapping as in the, the SIPA um, model used, and also in uh, various other orientations and configurations and even incorporating an encounter complex. Um, so finally, I'd just like to thank um, the uh, a number of people who were instrumental to this study, uh, including um, Dr. Adam Hill, who's head of the Computational Cardiac uh, Cardiology Laboratory in the Victor Chang, Jessica Farr, who uh, did the quality control software development, um, uh, close collaborations with Jamie Vandenberg and um, head of the cell cellular um, 
facility in the Innovation Centre, Jeffrey MacArthur, uh, as well as our collaborators in the UK, um, Gary Miram, Mirams and uh, University of Macau, um, Dr. John Lotley, who um, will be um, doing the the modelling, uh, drug modelling for the staircase protocol. And, and thank you very much to the organisers for allowing me the opportunity to speak. Thanks. Thank you very much, Monique. Um, I guess everyone can hear me now. This was a very nice comprehensive talk from your side. Thank you so much. Um, we have a few questions and they keep coming. So I'll just read them through here. Uh, from Ron, uh, what are your thoughts on potential mechanisms of the compound specific sensitivity susceptibility to fluoride positive relative to fluoride free you showed? Um, so we, we have a number of theories that we're exploring at the moment. Um, where considering whether it may be a solubility issue, um, that if the once the the drug crosses the membrane and it's ex exposed to the fluoride, it perhaps precip precipitates out of solution. Um, that's probably the easiest um, solution, uh, but uh, it may be um, related to an interaction of fluoride with the channel itself, uh, interaction of fluoride with the, the drug, um, and a little bit more difficult to explore, um, but we will be looking into that um, potential shielding um, effects um, but at this stage, these, these are just guesses that we're, we'll be looking into. Mm -hmm. And just from my side, I'm a little bit curious, have you used the standard uh, 384 plates or fluoride-free, the new ones that we have? Uh, we're, for our fluoride-free experiments, we're using the, your um, specialized fluoride-free mm -hmm. um, plates okay. and solutions. Um, and here we have uh, Bogdan. He asked, um, how would the HERC block kinetics data obtained with the Milnes protocol compare with those obtained with an envelope of TLS protocol? Okay. Uh, so we did actually start um, the with a envelope of TLS protocol uh, when we were deciding what, what protocol to go with for this kinetics. And what we found was um, because of the ability of some drugs to uh, dissociate while the channel's closed between subsequent sweeps, um, we weren't getting a true representation of the kinetics of blocks. So you, you'd potentially be getting drug washing out in between sweeps and then starting all over again. But you, to get a true representation of the kinetics, you really need to be measuring it um, while the channels are open and we're actually able, able to measure the response directly. Mm, any other questions? Maybe one more for me, we still have one minute. Um, you mentioned the, the recordings you've done with the temperature variations. Um, I suppose you're working on the room temperature. Have you tried it under physiological conditions as well? Um, so we've only tried the standard uh, um, fluoride containing plates and solutions. Well, we have actually tried the fluoride free, um, but at this stage, um, they were largely unsuccessful. Um, oh, okay, this was about the temperature. But, so oh, but the yeah, um, uh, one of the slides, um, the latest slides, I showed a comparison between um, the staircase protocol with um, physiological temperature and room temperature. So we have um, had a look at that. Good. And, and for the SIPA dynamic protocol, yeah. Thank you very much, Monique. Thank you for staying up that late for us. <laughs> thank, thank you for listening. <laughs> You're welcome. And 